Hey guys, Captain Retro here, bringing you a video that's different from the usual format. Uh, today we're looking at this excerpt from the Jerry Slyker VHS film, The Arcade and Attica in the year 2000. Now this is a VHS release that was sold privately at train shows and I believe at one time inside of the depot of the Arcade and Attica, but uh, for the uh, last couple of years has become rather obscure to find and although many people have it um, there's no telling how many folks actually have the VCRs needed to play it uh, I do believe that there might be a DVD release of this footage uh, as I do remember seeing a DVD at a booth at the Hamburg train show many years ago but I've been unable to find anybody who could corroborate that, corroborate that, or uh, I couldn't find any photographic evidence um, online of this DVD, so it could be uh, different content entirely, but I wanted to do my part and make sure that this footage is somewhat publicly viewable. However, I'm not too comfortable just blatantly putting it out there with no modification, no voiceovers, and I feel that by talking about this as kind of a review format, I can kind of get around the fact that it is copyrighted content, granted that it's about two decades old. Um, I don't mean any disrespect to uh, Mr. Slyker, who made these videos, who has passed, or his family, uh, and I don't know how active they are in this type of thing. Um... The website for Erie Valley videos uh, looks a little bit defunct, and if I'm honest, I never did go ahead and send them an email, so they might be producing these videos still. However, uh, I have not seen anyone obtaining any recent copies, and therefore when I was given this VHS tape, I went ahead and made a digital copy for the original owner and wanted to just share some of the footage that was on the VHS tape because as I say you know VCRs working VCRs are getting harder and harder to find let alone you also have to have the tape so if it ends up that I get enough push I, I might release the full thing on uh, on YouTube but as of right now, I'm kind of doing my part to make sure that there is some sort of modification to it, uh, which ensures that it's not violating copyright or anything like that. My channel can't get under scrutiny. This technically would be considered fair use because I am doing a commentary over the content, and that's why I decided to format it this way. So the footage you're seeing now is unique in the sense that not much of the freight uh, traffic of the Arcane Attica is on, pub on recording, at least available in the public record. And um, the freight traffic here features a plethora of fallen flag railroads and uh, several slightly older cars. And, of course, the, uh, the two engines that are featured in this video are numbers 112 and 111. Uh, most people who are familiar with the railroad today uh, are quite accustomed to seeing number 113 and 112, but 112 only gets brought out during the Christmas season, which we're entering now, and for the freight traffic. I have captured a couple instances of 112 in use but not solo and that's why i'm excited for this time of year however in this video you can see number 112 which is the yellow and red diesel which originally was acquired from the martin drake colorado springs coal-fired power plant in 1988 and was shipped out to here in arcade and arrived on a flat car down at the junction this is their same unit, number 112, which is painted in the ANA livery now and has been painted since about 2002 or so. 
So this footage, being in 2000, uh, actually has what is considered the sunflower scheme. Technically, it would be considered a transitional scheme because on either side of the hoods, where it says Arcade and Attica, you, it originally would have said City of Colorado Springs. And there is actually a couple photographs that have circulated with um, it being an arcade with that, those, with that lettering on the hoods. So technically, I would consider this a transitional scheme, but it is affectionately known as the Sunflower Scheme. The other diesel in question, which can be seen throughout the video uh, being used as a pusher, is one of the Arcade and Attica's original two 44-tonners. Number 111 was acquired in 1947 directly from General Electric um, when number 110 was in Iraq. So uh, number 111 is by all, all means a true A&A diesel purchased directly from the manufacturer for Arcade. And I think that's kind of the charm of the Arcade and Attica, really, is the fact that although right now they use... Uh, two diesels, which are not really originally A and A. Their original two would have been 110, which is on display, and 111, which now currently sits aside the shop, having been put back into service for the 2016-2017 season. But now is practically uh, cosmetically restored, but still retired. Um, but the fact that this railroad has always ran center cabs uh, and has, um, from the beginning, purchased two from directly from the manufacturer before obtaining two secondhand, um, aside from the time that there was an Elko S2 on the Y uh, on lease from the Western New York Railway Historical Society, it's just a neat concept where most railroads have moved on to other power. The ANA has stuck true to uh, center cab diesels. And you can see here is uh, 112 passes. You got um, this green hopper and then uh, the uh, older rib type. And then there's 111 there at the back being used as a pusher. So it's interesting to note that throughout this length of track, I guess, at the time, um, that they would use 111 as sort of distributed power. Um, now, I'm familiar with them doing it in the sense of from uh, hauling back from North Java, you got 112 uh, heading with 113 behind and then once they get behind Prestolite they'll use the siding which at this point where this footage was made that siding wasn't even in there and you would act they would actually run around um, 112 or uh, 113 rather and lead it on the front down to the junction cut it off and then use 112 to shove all the cars down to the BMP pickup siding and then couple 112 to 113 and then, you know, um, head back to the shops. But in this footage here, in the year 2000, uh, it seems that for the majority of the route, they would actually run one engine at one end and one engine on the back. Now, I'm not entirely sure myself whether that's for braking power, whether that's for traction, whether that's for track work reasons. I know the track work wasn't great, and it's been severely upgraded over the years. Um, I, even the fact that you can do maple runs, which is the other instance of 112 being used, um, cites the fact that all the track up to Java is at least set up for uh, passenger service now, which really speaks to just how much uh, effort has been put in the railroad to really tidy things up and make sure everything is well ballasted and well maintained. Um, and it's, it's just really interesting seeing this footage and kind of comparing the way it used to be to the way it is now and the, the types of rail cars they used to get, which is really the same. 
Um, I, I reached out to someone not too long ago and they just summarized, uh, because of course I, I do the HO scale models. And I, I asked him, I said, hey, would you be interested in some of these 3D printed shells? And he's like, oh, no, I, I won't model the ANA. It's just hoppers and tank cars. But, of course, the big kicker is uh, what era do you want to model? Because in the steam era, they would get everything. And in the uh, early 60s uh, to mid, mid-70s, mid you know, they, they had many options for different... Um, for different freight cars in in use, yeah, I had Agway that got box cars and Prosil had took took tankers for a time, so you had different types of tankers, and uh, of course, technically, although it's just because of the market fluctuating, uh, six lumber gets lumber, so you got box cars there, or occasionally center beam flat cars, but. The center beams are kind of interesting because they'll just take them off the junction. They, they won't even uh, run them down most of the A&A track. They'll just bring them down. And here you see the crew has uh, disembarked from their locomotive to get some food, which um, makes this just a, a very nice little recorded moment. Um, and, and again, just small things that might be seen as mundane. Um yeah, you know, I find this footage to be priceless for that same effect. Also note how Java Center is painted orange here. That's kind of neat. Uh, of course, they're refueling because it can be used as a refueling stop. And, you know, I didn't really know much about the, uh, the ANA in the pre-2000s just due to my age. And it's, uh, it's really neat just to see all this stuff and to learn about it. I remember the last time that I rode in um, the a a diesel there, 113, I, I rode with Dean. And I asked him, I said, uh, do you remember that Jerry Slyker video you were in? Because at, at this moment here, with the unfiltered audio, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not, but... Um, you can hear them talking as they're walking back up to the engine. And uh, I heard one guy laugh, and I, I told myself, that sounds like Dean. And I got to the end, and in the credits, um, Mr. Slyker actually uh, thanks the entire crew. And, uh, yeah, Dean was on then. Um, so it's interesting. And it, it's uh, nice in the sense that, you know, this captures someone's tenure, and... It captures this uh, kind of snippet of time that it seems not a lot of people really wanted to record, but I don't think that that's the case. I, I don't think that people didn't record. I, I think it's just the fact that um, much of the video, much like this one, is in VHS tapes, and you know you got to go out of your way to digitize it and to um, put it you know, um, on a digital format where it can be uh, uploaded on somewhere, or even if it's on your own private computer, uh, it's better than it just degrading its physical footage. I was blown away when um, Living With Steam uploaded their video that featured uh, the ANA and the Steam era. I, I would have thought that video footage would have surfaced decades ago. I mean, it, it's from the literal... Uh, 1940s I believe 1938 I think is what that footage is from and it's just a couple I think it's less than a minute of total footage of arcade at least from what's been posted now but still just the fact that it's out there um, is amazing and if you can ever get your hands on this this VHS tape or the DVD release if there is one I mean, this content is well worth it. I mean, Jerry did a really good job of um, capturing the ANA, as it were. I believe the entire video is 75 minutes, and this is just an excerpt from later on in the video, which covers the, the freight movements of the railroad. And, I mean, he, he did cab rides and stuff, rode around, rode along to the junction and such, 
And he also captured the passenger traffic with uh, 18 looking rather interesting with a, uh, a white arcade and attic on the tender, but an orange 18 on the cab. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it comes down to these kind of obscure DVDs. The, the folks that did go out of their way to record enough of the railroad to warrant a DVD release of some capacity. Um, but it, it's certainly not publicly available. And, I mean, I didn't even know that it was really out there. I remember seeing a like I said, a DVD or a VHS at the Hamburg train show many years ago. And, uh, I mean, I, I thought at the time I was like, Oh, 30 bucks for a DVD. I'll, uh, I'll pass on. It was like 24. And, uh, of course now I wish I would have grabbed it because then when I really got involved in the ANA collecting and, uh, rail fanning them as I do, I mean, footage of 112 in this Sunflower scheme is not available online, blatantly put. Um, this DVD is one of the first that I've seen that has footage. I have seen in private ownership a, a case of a VHS tape which features this engine in yellow and red with two hoppers and a single coach on a ghost pond re reflecting pool. I have yet to see that footage, but I'm making a verbal connotation of it to let future people know that it exists and it's out there. You just got to know who to talk to, and, you know, if you're lucky, maybe they'll, they'll let you look at it, you know, and, and uh, see the actual video footage. But, you know, I mean, it, for the most part, I, I'd like to think that it's all backed up in an archive, but people just aren't posting it because it's... It's copyrighted material, you know, at the end of the day. This does have a copyright on it, but like I said, I, I figured, technically speaking, so long as uh, I'm talking, it's commentary, and thus I, I feel it's fair use. And of course, if the original posters, the original recorders, the creators go out of their way to um, post it publicly, then none of that's even a uh, an issue but as far as other lost media if you want to call it that for the arcade and attica mr Slyker has a second vhs tape dvd uh, well this one i know comes in dvd um the arcade and attica and it's just titled excursions and i believe that one's in 2002 which is when he started working for them or while he was working with them and I have yet to see that video. I have someone who says that they'll provide me with a copy, but they're in the middle of a home restoration right now, so it's not top priority, and I understand that, and that's fine. Um, but I know it's out there, and if anyone happens to have it in their possession, you know, then good on them. Maybe they can post some screenshots or something. Uh, I was able to get my hands on uh, a DVD called Phantom Productions, which seems to be a one-off, small, independent person who uh, put a bunch of videos together. The DVD, like the physical DVD, was bad quality, and I could hardly get the thing to play the entire video. But that's interesting in the sense that it shows number 18 with Manly Hakes written on the side uh, of the cab. And also shows the turntable out, um, out out near 98. You can see here, too, this is the old sand house. Uh, it actually is um, on video here. The, and the excerpt that I posted on my uh, channel before has uh, the sand house in it as well. But that's long gone. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is just a, a little clip, um, just kind of... I wanted to get out there uh, to the public base of the Arcade in Attica, and I kind of brainstormed a little bit and came to the conclusion that a commentary might be the best way to do it. So I hope you have enjoyed Mr. Jerry Slyker's video footage because I know I was ecstatic when I saw it, and uh, I feel that it's obscure enough that I want a lot of people to see it. So I'll catch you guys in the next regular video. I hope you enjoyed.